Okay, so now that we have created the oval for our slabs, we are going to start locating the points at which we want to place them. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of sliders. So this first variable is going to define the height that we're going to have at each floor. So we're going to call this one floor height. And I'm going to set my value up to, I think 5 would be okay. And my second variable will determine the actual number of floors that we're going to have on our tower, which I think for this specific project is 56. So I'm going to set these to integers, and I'm going to put my values up to 60. And let's leave it like that. So the next thing we're going to do here is to call a series component. And I'm going to leave my start value at 0. And for my step size, I'm going to use this first variable that we have created here. And for the number of elements in my series, I'm going to use this second variable. So now as you can see, we have created some new values, and each one of these represents the heights at which each slab should be located. So now let's go ahead and do that by calling a move component. Then I'm also going to go to my vector tab and look for my C vector component. So my oval will be the geometry that I want to move. And of course, this one will be my vector. So if we go ahead to our perspective view, you'll notice that now we have our slabs at the correct height. And we can play a little bit with them. OK, so now we got to start taking care of the rotation part. And before we dive into this, let's just consult a little bit of information I found on the web. So this is a table I found about this project in which we can see the different rotation degrees we have at each lab. So as you can see, the ground floor starts at a minus 10 degree rotation, and our last floor has a 198 degree rotation. So now let's go ahead and create a domain with these two values. So I'm going to create a couple of new sliders here. I'm going to set my first slider at minus 10. And I'm going to set the second one up to 200. And leave my slider in 198. And I'm going to set both sliders to integers. Now we're going to create a domain with these two variables. So we're going to go here to our math tab, and then on our domain subcategory, we're going to select this construct domain component. So I'm going to plug my two sliders over here. And as you can see now, we have a domain that goes from minus 10 to 198. So this domain is actually going to help us find all the in-between rotation angles we have on our tower. So the next thing we're going to do here is to call a series component. And this time, I just want a simple count that goes from the number 0 up to the number of floors we have on our tower. So I'm just going to plug this value over here. And the next thing we're going to do here is to remap these 56 values with our rotation domain, and this shall give us the rotation degree value of each slab. So we're going to go ahead to our domain subcategory and look for our remap numbers component. So as you can see, this component is asking me for a set of values to remap. So we're going to use this series that we have just created. And then it is asking me for a source domain. So that one must come from this series of numbers that I have here. So to retrieve that domain, I'm going to go ahead to my domain subcategory and look for my bounce component. And what this component do is to retrieve the minimum and the maximum value in a series of numbers. 
So as you can see here, we have a domain that goes from zero up to 55. So we're gonna use this one as our source domain, and then we're gonna use our other domain as our target domain. So now we have all our values remapped and each one of these correspond to the rotation degrees of each slab. So let's go ahead and start actually rotating our slabs. I'm gonna go to my transform tab and then look for my rotate component. So I'm gonna plug my curves as my geometry I want to rotate. And I'm going to leave my plane as it is right now, as I don't need to change it actually. So now to set the angle of rotation, one thing we need to understand is that in Grasshopper, just as some other programming languages, you need to specify the angles of rotation in radians. So there are a couple of ways in which I can transform these values from degrees to radians. One is to go to our math tab and then under our trigonometry subcategory, look for our radians component. And what this component will do is to transform all my values into radians. And the other way is to right click under my A input and look for my expression option. Then open our editor. And if I click on this icon in the corner, a window will appear with a lot of functions we can use. So if we look for this rad option, you'll notice that we can convert our angle in degrees to radians. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this option. And then I can simply go ahead and plug these values into my input. Okay, so now as you can see here, our slabs are being rotated. Okay, so this looks good, but as you can see, these rotations are happening on a linear way. What if we would like to control the speed at which our tower is rotating? There are several reasons why we would like to have control over this aspect. For example, if we would like to look for the best sun exposure, or perhaps favoring certain views depending on the program of the tower. So one way in which we can control more dynamically our rotation is by adding a graph mapper. So I'm gonna go ahead to my parameters tab and then here under my input subcategory, I'm going to look for my graph mapper component. And the first thing that I'm gonna start doing is to set the type of graph that we're gonna be using. So in this case, we're gonna go for the Bezier curve graph. And the next thing we're gonna set up are the domains of this graph. So here we're gonna set the same domain we had for our rotation degrees, which is going from minus 10 up to 198. And I'm gonna do this for my X and my Y domain. I'm gonna click OK, and the next thing that I'm going to do is to plug my degree values into my graph mapper. And then I'm gonna replace this value over here. So now as you can see, nothing has changed, and that's because our graph still is in a linear way. But as soon as I start playing with my graph, you'll notice that the rotation of my tower will get affected. So now we can control the speed or the way in which our tower is twisting. So for example, if I would like to decrease the rotation, I would simply have to bring this value down over here. Or I can bring it back all the way up. Okay, so now as you can see, we have much more control over the rotation of our tower, and this will allow us to have several iterations of it. Okay, so I think that will be all for this video. In the next one, we're gonna start extracting the geometries for completing the massing of our tower. So thanks a lot for watching.